Good morning. If at any time you get to where you can't hear me, we'll just raise your hand. If any time I get too loud, just do this. <laughs> Forrest, cut it out. I'd, I'd like to say one thing real quick before I get into what I want, to, what I'm supposed to say. What what Ron said about, I mean, uh, Mike said about turning the phones down. Uh, Ken Shumate has a thing he always tells our students, and when we're getting ready for a listening lab, he said, "Now, he tells me, now you don't have to turn your phones down, but if it rings, you got to bring it to me, and I'll answer it." And then they get to talk, and I'll put it on speaker, and whoever's calling gets to hear We all get to hear what they've got to say. So remember, if you didn't turn your phone down, if it starts ringing, just bring it to me, and we'll go from there. I'm Charles Shelton, as some of you may know, and I am co-director of Office and Finance for the next two years I've got to go. You know, when... When this, you know, people call it the COVID virus, and, I, and that's polit politically correct. I call it the Wuhan virus. Don't mean to offend anybody, but that's what I call it. But when it hit, it hit, dropped on us like a ton of bricks, as you well know. Uh, we were scrambling around here trying to figure out what to do. Whether, do we have the workshop? Do we not have the workshop? Well, Pat and I were concerned about our finances, as you might imagine, because the workshop is when we get the majority of our donations from you guys. And she said, we can't continue to operate if we don't have a workshop. Well, we not only did it that year, but we did it for the next year, too. Thanks to you guys. Y'all have been awesome in keeping your contributions coming in. So awesome, in fact, that we, this past year, we only spent $22,000 more than what was donated. Now you say, ooh, how long can we keep going? Well, if it doesn't get any worse than that, we'll be in pretty good shape for a while. I'm going to share with you here in a little bit what our financial situation is. Uh, some people don't like to do that, but we run our open books here. If any time you wanted to come up to the office and look at them, you can do that. So I, I told the other co-directors, well, why don't I just go over them briefly, and then if they have questions, maybe they'll, they'll come to us. Uh, we get our operating capital from donations from people like you, from people that are not even sojourners, and from some fi uh, foundations that where the uh, people have, have passed on and they left money to us. People we don't even know, and we don't for sure know how they knew about us. But we thank God and go ahead and put it in the bank. So, the question comes up about how much money can we have in the bank before the IRS starts taking notice of us. There is no set limit that a nonprofit entity can have in the bank. Uh, the IRS doesn't really worry about that. What they worry about and what puts an, a, an entity or an organization at risk is not how to make it, it's what they do with it. I guess I should qualify that a little bit because a nonprofit, now we don't have this situation, but other nonprofits do, a nonprofit or, uh, un entity organization cannot rent out their building to someone else and claim that income from the rental of that property as 
non-taxable because it is taxable. Now, that begs the question of what are we going to do if and when we ever get to the point in the pine thicket down here that we want to harvest some of it. Is it going to be taxable? Is it not? Well, I'm going to let Jim Gordon answer that for us when the time comes. But those are things that we have to consider. Again, there's no limit to what we can have in the bank at the year end. Uh, and actually having a reserve is a good thing because that gives us some leeway on emergency things that might come up, uh, buying new equipment. Uh, Joe and, and uh, uh, Scott will talk to you a little bit about that uh, tomorrow. But uh, that did come up, uh, and we had a, uh, a purchase of about $18,000, uh, and it didn't, it didn't bother us because we had the money. Uh, now, it's good to have a reserve because the cash flow of nonprofit unit entity substantially fluctuates throughout the year. Now, from those of us from Oklahoma, those two big words means that it goes up and down a lot. <laughs> as best as I can determine. Uh, so, how much should we keep in the bank? Depends on who you talk to. Some people say six months expenditure is enough. Other people say, no, you need, you need up to two years. Doesn't hurt anything. Now, we have at the uh, Texas Bank and Trust here in Marshall, we have three accounts. We have a capital improvements account, we have a general checking account, and we have a savings account. Now, as I said, we spent about $22,000 more this past year. I look back from the end of starting of September last year to the starting of September this year, and we spent about $22,000 more than what we we brought in. Uh, we spend in the neighborhood, and it fluctuates too, somewhere around $125,000 a year on keeping this place going. Electricity alone is about twenty-six to thirty thousand dollars. We are not what I call a small entity. We're not large by some standards, but we're not small when you go to looking at what all it takes to keep this place going. Uh, there's maintenance that has to be done all the time, uh, things that need to be, that need to be bought. Uh, one thing I think that Joe or Scott's going to talk to you about is, uh, Right now, it's not a critical need. You know, we have ways of changing out the light bulbs in here and over there uh, outside. Did anybody see the picture of Joe up there changing one of them one time outside on one of the electric poles? I don't like that, and he doesn't either. So we're thinking about, we hadn't, hadn't decided yet, we're thinking about some kind of a man lift, a portable man lift that come through those doors and come in here and get up here and change the lights. That beats trying to climb up a, what is it, 20 foot ladder? Is that what you, is that what it was, Jim? Your ladder, is it considered a 20 foot uh, A-frame ladder? You get up that high on one of those and it gets just a little bit daunting. So if we had a man lift, like I say, we hadn't decided yet, we're discussing it. But those are some of, some of the kind of things that come up. Now, 
Let's talk about our travel fund. How many of you knew, know that we have a travel fund? Good. Don't be afraid to use it. This year, the elders from Burleson donated $13,000 to our travel fund. That will buy some of you two tankfuls of diesel. <laughs> we have previously had a limit of $500 per year per sojourner couple or a single if, they, if they're not married. We are in the process of changing that. And we have, uh, I don't know if you've noticed over there on the boards, on the request for help sign-up sheets, there's a little sticker on it that says, This sojourn require, uh, qualifies for travel assistance. Those are ones that we did not feel last year. We're giving, some, giving you a little bit of an incentive, maybe, to go ahead and sign up. Come to the office, fill out the sheets, and nobody's going to think bad of you. Not at all. We all need assistance sometime. Now, on the flip side of that, some of us have been, we've all been richly blessed, but some of us have been richerly blessed. I don't even... Is that, a, is that a word? That's an Oklahoma word. If you want to donate some money to help your brethren to go on more sojourns than they normally would, go to the office and do that. It's, those kind of things are kept confidential. We're not going to go out and say, yeah, you know who asked for travel assistance? We're not, that, that doesn't, that's not happening. That's not what we are, who we are. So if you need assistance, ask for it. Okay. Uh, as some of you may have noticed, we have redone our suggested donations of when you come here uh, and uh, use the facilities. Uh, somebody said, well, you know, you're asking for $4 a night. We go and we work somewhere else and we pay them $12 a night. Why don't we pay 12 here? You can. <laughs> 4 that's a suggested. It's not binding, it's a suggested. Okay, now, I mentioned our three accounts we have with uh, Texas Bank and Trust. Uh, we have a little over $40,000 in our checking account right now. We've got a little over 191000 in our savings account. Now, we do get some money uh, for the uh, gas that's pumped out from underneath our ground here. It's not a lot. Uh, back in the summer when gas was down to 40 or 50 dollars, I think we got something like, Pat can correct me, but I think we got something like four or five hundred dollars a month for there for several months. I think when it went back up, we got like thirteen hundred dollars one month. It helps, but it's not a determining factor of what we can do. And then in our Capital, what happened to it, Joe? Yeah, yeah, I knew what it was called. I just can't find it. Capital Improvement Account. We've got about $85,000 in that. So altogether, we've got about $317,000, a little over, in the bank. Now, 
I don't know about you guys, but from, from an old boy that was raised on the banks of the Little River in southeast Oklahoma, one of 12 kids, and Daddy made $40 a week, that's a substantial chunk of pocket change. But you think about it. We spend one hundred and twenty-five to one hundred and thirty thousand dollars a month here. A year here, a year. So that's a little over two years reserve, which, according to people, like I say, it depends on who you talk to. Some people say you need at least two, two, you know, around two two years of reserves. So. What do we do with the money that's in the bank? Do we wait till we need it to use it, and then if we do something else with it, we don't have it? Or do we do something else with it and hope that we don't need it and try to make a little extra? Do we do like the uh, one-talent guy, hide it in the ground and say, Lord, here's your money, or here's your talent, what you gave me? I'm not smart enough to know the answer to that question. I'm open to suggestions. If you have anything, you think we shouldn't leave the money in there, you got a better idea, come and talk to us. We're not kings on the throne. Well, one of us was when he was co-director, but none of the rest of us are. (laughs) Some of you know what I'm talking about. We carried him high about that all year. We're here, same as you are. That's all I got to say.